Snow-capped for six months of the year, the snowy mountains in the southeast corner of New South Wales form the highest mountain range in the Australian Alps. In the wild mountain gorges rise some of Australia's greatest rivers. It's a lonely, inaccessible country. Down from the high ranges lie small scattered townships, Berrydale, Adamidabi, Jindabyne, their activities bound up with the surrounding countryside. Over 100 years, the development of the snowy region has centered around its well-established grazing properties, breeding sheep and cattle and horses. But with a nationwide shortage of power and water, its greatest asset is a million acres of winter snow. Snow water racing down the mountain gorges, swelling into creeks and rivers, the Jihai, the Tumut, the Swampy Plains, the Yukumbeen, the Tuma, the Murrumbidgee and the Snowy River. Schemes for limited development of the resources of the Snowy Mountains are not new. But in 1946, representatives of state and federal governments, facing urgent demands for more power and greater food production, called for a national plan. In 1949, Commonwealth Parliament passed an act setting up the Snowy Mountains Hydroelectric Authority. Basis of the plan is to dam the river waters at selected places before they leave the high country and divert them inland through a series of tunnels dropping some three to five thousand feet to the Murray and Murrumbidgee river systems. This controlled flow of water will be used to generate electric power in a series of power stations and then on to the Murrumbidgee and Murray Valley doubling the water available for irrigation. From an official opening ceremony, however, it's a long way to completed dams and power stations. Investigation to date has been in general terms. Now it must be detailed. Access roads must be surveyed and built and camps set up before any construction work can start. It is pioneering work. In the early stages, conditions are rough. On the sites of future dams and power stations, camps and barracks must first be built. Workshops and stores depots are laid out. In comes heavy earth moving equipment, materials and machinery. A growing body of workmen cuts into the heart of the Alps, building miles of all-weather roads, opening up 4,000 square miles of the snowy mountains.
order to avoid overtaxing national resources, the authority brings prefabricated buildings and equipment and labor from overseas. Materials and men move into big work camps in the mountains. Island Bend, Munyang, Guthika, Jindabyne, Tumut Pond. Sites for future dams and power stations. Winter brings its own problems. Snow cats and tractors carry equipment for Spencer's Creek, Guthica and Tumut Pond above the snow line. A dog team is used for light loads and emergencies. The bulldozers and snowplows keep open the roads and the supply trucks grind their way through to the mountain camps. Here are self-contained communities where men from overseas and Australians live together on the job. But road and camp construction is only one phase of the early work on the Snowy Project. Detailed planning requires exact data. Survey parties, geologists and weathermen cover the whole area, checking the proposed dam sites, studying the levels of the water races, plotting the paths of the tunnels. Above every proposed dam site and tunnel line, the diamond drillers go into action. On the rugged hillsides by Jindabyne, where the snowy races down from Kosciuszko, they test the structure of the ground. The cores of earth and rock taken from hundreds of feet below the surface are subjected to detailed analysis. The location of the dams depends on the results of these drillings and other soil tests. Records of rain and snowfall, of water flow in the creeks and rivers, detailed contour mapping of the area are all part of the essential information which is assembled and sifted by the engineers of the investigation division. Only with this detailed knowledge can design and construction engineers go ahead with the plans for the dams, tunnels and power stations. In 1951, after two years of preliminary work on road building, camp construction and field investigation, the contract is let for the building of the first dam and power station at Guthiga. By 1954, this will be producing 80,000 horsepower the first step towards doubling Australia's output of electric power. By the time the scheme has been completed, there will be over 20 dams, 16 power stations, and 86 miles of tunnels, harnessing the power of the snowy waters. Gashes on the mountainside mark the early stages of construction work on one of the world's great engineering projects. <laughs> 